Gerbengus. All of y'all the same, you some homos. She gave me top and she a 10, watch Mojo. Hop out with the stick, no pogo. Got so much money, thought my first name was Shlomo. You ain't seen what I seen, need a GoPro. I saw the towers fall down in slow-mo. And all I'm saying is when it comes to the official narrative, I don't know. When a man and a woman love each other, there's something that happens, right? You, you go through the rigmarole, you know, you're, um, you're kind of doing the motions and something comes out of your wiener and it goes and it fertilizes an egg. But things are different now. They have this technology called IVF. It stands for in vitro fertilization. What happens in in vitro fertilization? The woman's got eggs. They take the eggs out of the female. They throw it into a container. Bam! Then they take a little drop, a little dripper, and they drop a single nut on top of the egg. Bloop! Then they combine. And it creates something called an embryo. <clears throat> It's at this point that they take this embryo and they put it back inside the bitch. <clears throat> this is the process of in vitro fertilization. And traditionally, couples would have different reasons to do this. Maybe they're having trouble conceiving through normal means, etc. But the interesting thing about in vitro fertilization is it opens up other avenues that are more recent that we are just exploring now in relation to something called embryonic screening. So this embryo is now outside. People can look at it, assess its DNA. We now have large databases, genomic databases. Um, as science goes on, we find out more and more that a lot of things are heritable, a lot of things are in fact nature, and we can pinpoint certain genes that correlate with something like IQ, something like height. So uh, we have these large databases and they can be used to create these predictive frameworks of screening the embryos for these certain characteristics. So what couples can do now, and what some wealthy couples are doing, um, they go through multiple cycles of IVF, which does take time. And let's say they get 10 embryos, 10 viable embryos, which is not easy. Like there's a lot of complications that can happen there, but let's just say that happens. Through IVF, they produce 10 viable embryos. They can now pay these, these new up-and-coming businesses involving genomic prediction, involve in, involving embryonic screening, um, to analyze these 10 embryos for certain desired characteristics. So let me pull up an article here. U.S. startup charging couples to screen embryos for IQ. Heliospect, it's called. Marketed up to $50,000 for 100 embryos. Undercover footage shows. A U.S. startup company is offering to help wealthy couples screen their embryos for IQ using controversial technology that raises questions about the ethics of genetic enhancement. The company, Heliospec Genomics, has worked with more than a dozen couples undergoing IVF, according to undercover video footage. The recordings show the company marketing its services at up to $50,000 for clients seeking to test 100 embryos and claiming to have helped some parents select future children based on the genetic predictions of intelligence. Managers boasted their methods could produce a gain of more than six IQ points. The footage appears to show experimental genetic selection techniques being advertised to prospective parents. A Heliospect employee who has been helping the company recruit clients outlined how couples could rank up to 100 embryos based on IQ and other naughty traits that everybody wants, including sex, height, risk of obesity, and risk of mental illness. 
The startup says its prediction tools were built using the data provided by UK Biobank, a taxpayer-funded store of genetic material donated by half a million British volunteers, which aims to only share data for projects that are in the public interest. Katie Hassan, associate director of the Center for Genetics and Society in California, said one of the biggest problems is that it normalizes this idea of superior and inferior genetics. The rollout of such technologies reinforces the belief that inequality comes from biology rather than social causes. For Michael Christensen, Heliospec's Danish CEO and former financial markets trader, genetic selection provides a bright future. Everyone can have all the children they want, and they can have children that are basically disease-free, smart, healthy, it's gonna be great. Heliospec does not provide IVF, but rather uses algorithms to analyze the genetic data supplied by parents to predict the specific traits of their individual embryos. The team offered a guided tour of their test website, which is not yet public. During the presentation, they claimed selecting the smartest of 10 embryos would lead to an average IQ gain of more than six points. Although other traits such as height and risk of obesity or acne could be prioritized depending on personal preferences. Eventually, Christensen envisaged, the advent of lab-grown eggs would allow couples to create embryos on an industrial scale, a thousand or even a million, from which an elite selection could be handpicked in the future. The offering might be extended to include personality types, including providing scores for what he called the dark triad traits. You can't make this stuff up, folks. This is getting wild. So that's all I'm going to read for now. But this is interesting regarding the advent of lab-grown eggs. So one of the real limitations of IVF and embryonic screening right now is that, well, women only produce, you know, a few hundred eggs over their lifetime in a in a relatively small window in comparison to men who you know there's tens of millions of nut and it just keeps on flowing in our balls every single day it's a it's a practically infinite amount right but but there's very limited amounts of eggs so for a couple to um through IVF create 100 viable embryos, which is the max that you could hand over to these embryonic screening facilities um, for 50K uh, would be a miracle. I mean, I suppose it's possible, but in fact, you're lucky to get 10 embryos. It's not always successful, the IVF. Um, and even then, when they try to put the embryo back in, there could be other consequences. <clears throat> So, to, to get 100 is not easy. But even if you, if you hand over 10, this company, Heliospec, claims an IQ gain of more than six points. So, out of 100, we might be looking at like a whole standard deviation higher if you're able to supply 100 embryos to screen. Um, so, it, it, you know, it's not like you're just character building a child, right? It all comes from you and uh, your mate. But in the future, if we can close this gap between eggs and sperm through the advent of lab-grown eggs, you can generate millions of eggs, fertilize them all, then out of these millions of embryos, run these algorithms to select for desired traits, come up with a few embryos out of these millions, the very cream of the crop that your personal genetics could achieve. Because here's the thing, man, and I'll, uh, let me go to full screen to change this up. Because here's the thing, genetic recombination can be a really big deal. You ever know two brothers and one brother just mogs the fuck out of the other? Now, on a balance of probabilities, some will get good traits, some will get the worst traits, but it'll sort of balance out, you know what I mean? But through embryonic screening, you could search all of these and find the one. The max you could do now is 100 and that's not very realistic. Because number one, it is a very rigorous process to go through these cycles of IVF. Generating 100 embryos would be very painstaking. It would take a while. Um, it would not be easy. 
And the second thing is that there is skepticism regarding these embryonic screening models. Now, the company claims out of 10 embryos they can produce an IQ uh, benefit of six points. This can't be validated. This is just what the company is saying. Now, there are rich people that are buying into this, but we can't be for certain. Now, we do say that, that things like IQ and height are something like 80% heritable, um, but it could be that it's not very easy to screen for the specific genes that produce these desirable traits. Um, and it, it's, it has only become possible uh, when these, these private embryonic screening firms are able to access these massive databases in order to create these predictive frameworks. And even then, some people find it uh, shaky. Some geneticists are like, it's not that simple. Um, it might be more variable. Point being is that there's still a, a long way to go. But if we just take this concept and run with it and look towards the future, we're looking at something, you know, straight out of the sci-fi books. This eugenics based on filtering a few out of millions of embryos to find the most desirable future child and just, you know, lab growing these ubermensch. And dude, imagine just walking around in 2040 and just getting absolutely mobbed by a lab baby. High school will be crazy. And there's this, there's this dubious black pill idea going around right now that eugenics is already kind of happening post-sexual revolution through uh, female hypergamy. This, in my assumption is just incorrect. You look at IQ, it's dropping. Um, these mating behaviors are actually very dysgenic. And we, we don't even, in regards to like Zoomers being taller, people getting taller, women selecting for height, we don't even have evidence that the men actually breeding are taller. Um, they might be able to be more promiscuous, but... <clears throat> In my observation, the people forming long-lasting bonds and having children, etc., they skew more normal towards the population they're in. They just have community. Because these casual encounters that are happening, they don't really produce children. We have all the technology to make them not produce kids. And this is where it gets interesting. These technologies, if they reach the point to where they are very effective, will be released um, in the midst of a, of a bit of a population collapse. And that's already going on. And when these technologies release, it will be the wealthy people that will have access to them. I'm already observing this thing in regards to younger Zoomers or Generation Alpha. If I think about like a working class family, I'm thinking about the parents are working all the time um, they, they don't have time, they don't have money. So the kids are spending a lot of time completely ab uh, immersed in, you know, the super stimulus of the internet, their iPad kids. And what this does is it makes them retard, you know, in the purest sense of the term, this isn't like a slur, it retards their brain, their executive function to focus on a concentrated task for any extended amount of time, which at that point it even makes their, their intelligence quotients uh, not, not a factor if you're unable to focus at all. <clears throat> and the young, the young kids being raised now, the young Zoomers, the Generation Alpha that are able to avoid this, in my mind, are, are going to be the wealthier families who have time, who have money to put energy and concentration into these kids and, and micromanage these things to keep them away from these super stimuli and the wealthy people who are having these kids are presumably aware of, of these, these pitfalls. They will have a higher IQ already because IQ is correlated to your economic success. So I'm just looking at the future. I'm taking these concepts and I'm running with it. 
most of the people that are going to be having kids are going to be the ones that, that just breed. They don't really think about it. Um, they don't have access to birth control or they're morally against it or whatever. But, you know, they don't really have the money or the time, but they just have these kids. And then there's going to be a select few of rich people, people with time and money, and they're probably higher IQ, and they're going to have these kids, and it's going to be very planned out. And with the advent of this embryonic screening, the division, which I'm already seeing a little bit of in regards to the controlling of media diet and also regular diet as well. Like these working class families, they're going to be gobbling up this slop while richer families, they're probably able to be more healthy than ever. There's all this information, all this research. They have all the money to get all these different supplements and biohacking and green smoothies and all this shit. And they're going to feed their kids this. So there's already this division going on. Enter in embryonic screening. It, it's like going to widen to such a large degree. These rich people are going to be able to screen their millions of embryos. They're probably already higher IQ to begin with. There are more eugenic to begin with. Then you screen these Johns. <clears throat> They're pumping out these Ubermensch kids. All these other people that don't have access to this technology or the time to um, keep their kids from con consuming slop of, of all kinds. <clears throat> and it's like a bifurcation of the human race. This is getting schizo. I'm just taking these concepts and running with it, you know. You can actually relate it to Nietzsche in the way that in Thus Spoke Zarathustra, there's this concept of the last man. And these are uh, probably psychological frameworks. Um, some people believe that Nietzsche was somewhat of a, of a prophet. He had like a predictive aspect to his writings. They say he predicted wars and, and things like this. I'm not so sure. I'm not super learned on Nietzsche. I'm just borrowing these, uh, these concepts and the Redditors can say what they will. Um, but there's this idea of the last man who is basically like a, like a bug person, um, completely beholden to his desires um, addicted to slop. Its ultimate priority is comfort and routine. And this last man is, is supposed to be the opposite of the Ubermensch. And there, there are many more of them than there are the Ubermensch. And if you just go down the rabbit hole of thought, you can envision a future where they're just, there are all these bug men. And then there are these few people who are already richer and uh, you know, more intelligent on average than, than the masses who are able to access this eugenic technology. And you just have all these bug men and then these Ubermensch at the top, this ruling class, this elite. And it's like, uh, they're like almost two different sub races. The, the differentiation between them will go larger and larger as technology is a double-edged sword that hurts the the poor who are unable to regulate it or use it, utilize it and benefits the the rich who are able to <clears throat> eugenically in a transhuman sense um use it to their benefit a new dominance hierarchy will be established and at the top will be the eugenic technocratic elite it's like yeah Nietzsche warned about this, you know? It's like, all right, most people can't even go one month without uh, touching their cock. It's like, you know, most people are not gonna make it to the top because they can't stop eating all this slop. And I just got some top. Shorty a little baddie. Shorty my little boo thing. And Shorty got the fatty. Shorty be catching mood swings. All right, let me... Um, but here's the thing about it, though. This is all, that's all wild. I don't actually believe that's going to happen. That's just wild conjecture. Here's what I'm thinking. Let's say I'm in the position where I get a hot wife, you know, six foot tall, half Asian, big old rack. Yeah, yeah. And I got the money, the technology is there where I have the opportunity to screen all these embryos. To get, these, to get these embryos, to start screening them, let's say I get 
the select, you know, let's say I'm able to do a thousand. I have the money to, to lab generate a thousand eggs. And then I nut in a cup and I say, here you go, make a thousand embryos. Would I do it? I don't know. See, here's just something I intuit. If a kid is born through IVF, I already don't trust his ass. I don't know. There's got to be something off about him. They're not conceived God's way. Here's how they were conceived. They put an egg in a container. They got a dropper and they went bloop. And then they put it in, put it back. No, man, there's got to. Maybe I'm overly superstitious. No shot. No shot that motherfucker comes out all good with a soul and shit. And I'm joking, and I'm saying it in a joking manner, but I seriously believe it. I don't know if I'm trusting it. I just, in, I just intuit that there's always an intrinsic, unseen consequence to this kind of stuff. Beyond the financial cost and the complications that, you know, it might not work. The embryo might just not uh fertilize correctly or whatever. But hey, that's one thing. But that's whatever, right? Maybe some kids could be could be born through IVF and you'd say that's normal. If if the if the egg comes from the mother and the sperm comes from the father and it's just in vitro fertilization its own that's one thing. Maybe maybe the kids a little maybe they like lack creativity or some shit. I don't know how it would manifest, but something would be off. That's just what I think. But it would be minor, right? That's one thing. But when you get the these lab grown eggs, it's not even they lab grow the eggs and then they fertilize it. That's like double science shit. Bro, those motherfuckers are not gonna have they're not going to be normal, bro. I picture them maybe being like psychopaths or something. It's a lab-grown egg. No, man. Call me a Luddite. Call me a superstitious. This is where I draw the line. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it if I had to lab-grow the eggs. And in terms of the normal embryonic screening, it's a pain in the cock to... to uh, produce all of these viable embryos to screen, you need, you know, at least five or ten to get any result. And then they screen them, and then you got to put it back in, and it might not work then. If they iron all that stuff out, I might do it for like a video, you know what I mean? If I still have the channel by then. <laughs> but I don't know, man. This, this whole lab-grown eggs thing going off without a hitch... No, no, I might be superstitious, but these kids, there's going to be something off from them. And I I would wager, if I were a gambling man, that it, this will backfire somehow. You can't just do that, bro. These kids are going to snap when they're 18 and just start killing people or something. Or they're not, they're not going to be all there. Even if they're smarter, even if they're taller, even if they have, even if they're immune to disease. Something regarding the essence will be gone. Call me gay. Call me gay. Call me a 